Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today what we're going to talk about is threat hunting beyond your boundary with open source tools. And specifically, we're going to talk about how you can use Shodan to look for vulnerable hosts on the outside that are communicating on hosts inside your network. Um, and then from there, we'll talk about why that's important. And spoiler alert, it's because there's always trust relationships between hosts on the inside and outside. And so tracking vulnerabilities one hop out can be really important and a really important part of a threat hunt. So hopping right in, actually a report that was released last week uh, was this CIS advisory outlining People's Republic of China, the top popular CVEs used since 2020. And so what, where we, why we wanted to start with this is we wanted to start with, hey, we have this report. Now, how do we start adding it to our threat hunting? And for today's purposes, Shodan's actually a pretty good candidate of a way you can take this CISA report and put it into action. Um, and with the tool we released today, so the tool we released today, um, actually we put it out a few days ago as part of our RSA conference talk. Um, this tool will really help you um, quickly find if you, know, if you have bad trust relationships that you do need to worry about. So diving into this report, there were 16 CVs inside of it. Um, for a whole mess of different products, everything from Cisco to QNAP to Pulse. And what we did is we went through these vulnerabilities. We used the Vuln tag inside Shodan. So if you have a paid account, you can do Vuln colon and then give it a CV. Um, the other way of doing it is to just go IP to IP. We'll talk about how, though, that's really time consuming. What we initially wanted to do, though, was see, hey, from these CVEs, which ones actually have results in Shodan? Because... Up front, if Shodan can't actually see these vulnerabilities, um, then Shodan's not going to be able to help us. But in this case, we actually have three different vulnerabilities that do have results in Shodan. There are vulnerable hosts, and we can see from the Cisco one, there's actually about 3,000 vulnerable hosts. The Citrix one, 300, and Pulse, you know, also about 300. Um, these are the three vulns that we're going to focus on. Um, because again, the other ones are still important. It's just, again, you have to understand limitations of tools. And in this case, Shodan probably doesn't have visibility into these vulnerabilities. So it's not going to help us um, to use Shodan as a tool to look for this. So brief primer on Shodan. This is what the page looks like. Starting in the top left, you have your network information, host information, things like ISP, things like ASN, the IP address, country, city, some of the IP geo. Below that, if you're manually going to these pages in the bottom left, you have vulnerabilities. And so you see the one in the orange box, that's one of the vulnerabilities from the report we previously mentioned, so that one's in scope. We also see other vulnerabilities that Shodan detects that this has. If you go into the XML, you can see if these vulnerabilities are verified. Again, you have to, have to actually click on that raw data tab if you see up near the IP address in the top. Um, but otherwise, other information here, things like open ports, um, and then you actually, for certain protocols, you'll see information. So like here, you see the SSH port, and it's running drop bear SSH. Um, and really, this is just a quick primary of if you go to this page manually. But today, again, we're going to talk about how we've automated that search for searching for a host that you might be talking about that are one hop out from you. And so, you know, starting out and bringing it to the relevance of threat hunting, what if we wanted to threat hunt with the CV information from the report, right? How do we take that report and actually put it into action? And specifically, some of our possible goals could, could be, hey, I want to know what network hosts are communicating with potentially compromised assets on the outside. So again, this is a report said, hey, here's 16 volumes that China's like using since 2020. Let's take those vulns now and use Shodan to say, hey, you know, am, do I see from a packet capture file, do I see any of my hosts communicating with those because those boxes might be compromised? We don't know. It's a good starting point or it's a good point to really begin to pull that string inside your network. Um, in this case, to look for known capabilities if you're looking for Chinese nation state actors. The other thing that this is important for is looking at those trust relationships and specifically things that you allow through firewall or allow lists. And so if there's an IP that you trust that's shown up in Shodan and you see that it has one of these popular vulnerabilities, 
then you might want to second guess and you might want to think like, okay, if this IP on the outside, if this resource is essential, then I might need to apply additional filtering, apply a little rigor to actually checking to be like, hey, let me make sure that someone isn't um, ab abusing or exploiting this trust relationship into the network. If you were to do this analysis manually that we're saying, you would have to then grab the packet capture, grab the data, grab the Zeek logs, however you want to do it. You would have to take out all of the private IPs. So the non RFC 1918 IP addresses are the one we want. These are the ones that are not the 192.168s, not the 10.0.0s, but the external IP. Um, and then you would have to look up each of these IPs individually in Shodan and check for that CV of interest as we saw. And then probably build an Excel spreadsheet manually or however else you wanna track this. And again, this above process might produce nothing. Um, if the CVE isn't in Shodan or if you have a bunch of IP addresses to deal with, this is not something that's going to be easy to do on scale. Um, even if you have like a medium or even you know smaller side of medium network, it's just not something you're going to be able to do. So this is a prime candidate for automation which is why we open source this tool. Um, so depending on the number of those public IPs you have, this is going to take a while. And this is exactly why we focused our talk last week at RSA on this exact problem. So we released a tool called Shift. It's out on GitHub, the link's right here. And what it does is it automates the search for those vulnerable hosts in a PCAP file. And so what we do is we use T-Shark to process the PCAP we pull out all of the external source and destination IP addresses. Um, and this is just done in the TCP layer. So we aren't fancy yet. We didn't actually go into like DNS. Um, maybe someone can drop that in, but right now it's just doing the um, TCP IP layer um, or just the IP layer would be the proper one. Um, you then give it your Shodan API key and it'll take those IPs, all the public IPs that it sees and it'll use Shodan's Python API to actually look up their, the host record for that. Um, it'll check the CVEs in Shodan's host record if they're there. And then the final output will either come out in JSON or comma separated value or optionally out to Elastic um, for you to search um, through the data. So again, three ways of doing it, but it automates that manual process we talked about earlier. Um, that makes hunting in a medium or large network not feasible. So how do you actually use it? Step zero is to actually install dependencies. So you need to make sure that T Shark and Python 3 are installed, and then you need to use pip3 to load requirements.txt to load the Python dependencies. And inside the GitHub repo, we actually provide a Python requirements.txt that you can use. So once you've loaded the Python dependencies, the next thing you need to do is create the CVE definition file. And this is a simple comma separated value text file where you give it the CVEs that you care about to be compared against the Shodan record. So what you can see on the bottom of the slide is a very simple example to where we took that original CISA report and we just put it in a comma separated all one line um, file that we're going to feed into the tool when we actually. So once you have the CV fi definition file created, you're then the going to gather your PCAPs. Um, Shift, we use PyShark, like I said, to iterate through packets and to pull out those source and destination IP addresses. And so all you need to provide are PCAP files. So if you're getting them out of T-Shark, TCP dump, maybe even out of your Palo Alto firewall, all you need to go out to all you need to do is go out to the networks that you're interested in grabbing data from um, and bring back either PCAP or PCAP NG files that T Shark can iterate through to find the host. The final step you're going to do is you're actually going to process the PCAP with shift. Um, and so again, it's a simple, if all your dependencies are there, all you have to do is run Python 3. Um, we call it main.py, whatever you name the scripts, fine. You give it that PCAP as the first option. You give it your CV um, definition file as the second option. You give it your Shodan key as the third. And then finally, you can either give it, you know, tag CSV and give it the output file you want. You can do tag JSON and give it the um, JSON file to write out to. 
for the elk and definitely look at the uh, dash H options um, for the elk options. You can actually give it for the elastic version. It does support authentication, so you can give it the username and password if you're using elk eight, which actually ships with authentication enabled, or if you're using an older version of elk and you have um, the security pack actually enabled. But what you'll do, you'll see the sample terminal output that you see on the bottom left there. Um, and you'll see the steps as it's actually going through them. So as it's extracting, as it's pulling the CVs out of the CV file, as it's querying Shodan, and then as it's loading results. Your sample file, in this case, you see the one in CSV format. So we have the IP address um, associated of interest that was pulled out of the PCAP. And then on the right, or comma separated on the right, you actually have the CVE associated with that IP address. With this, the final step actually after this step is then performing the hunt, proving the hypothesis, seeing if you need to pivot into any other data. But at this point, what you've done is you've taken that uh, packet capture file, you've taken the CVs from the report, and now you actually have something to finish out the analysis or to potentially find more bad things to dig into. So thanks for joining in this week. Again, we wanted to show an example of how you can use showed into threat hunt and uh, the example we used today was the scissor report um, which was a really good example about 16 different cves um, and yeah we hope that this tool is helpful for you if you have any other ideas for tech talk tuesday or if you just want to get in touch to provide feedback or you have questions definitely feel free to reach out and thanks again for joining in this week